Okay, is it better now? Okay, so I, I've been involved in, uh, in uh, getting service providers out there, both with OpenSec and with some other uh, technologies. With me here today, Omar Lara is a solutions architect uh, at Canonical, uh, and he has also been delivering uh, some uh, uh, or creating service providers. He uh, uh, created uh, suempresa.com, which is arguably the first service provider based on OpenStack in the whole Latin American um, uh, region, right? So before we get into the matter, what we want to try to, to achieve here is to explain how we succeeded with OpenStack in service providers, how we failed with OpenStack in service providers, and give you kind of a, an overview on how we envision the future of service providers. Um, before that, let me just uh, give you a quick uh, uh, overview of what, what Canonical is, what my company does. Canonical is the company behind Ubuntu. Uh, that's the most recognizable brand. Um, and Ubuntu is the number one operative system in Linux desktop, is the number one OS in the cloud as well. Uh, that means that 60% of all the Linux OS are spun up in the most, uh, or in the three major public clouds uh, are Ubuntu, right? So we lead there. And according to the um, latest and the, the previous uh, OpenStack surveys, the, this one uh, was released a few days ago, Ubuntu is also the leading OS in OpenStack. So production de deployments of OpenStack are based out in, uh, in Ubuntu uh, on a 65% when we're talking about those big clouds, the ones that are over 1,000 uh, users. That means that is way more than the rest of the OS combined. Okay, so we lead in OpenStack as well, some of our customers uh, over there. And as I say, Ubuntu underpins most of the OpenStack clouds. Uh, it doesn't have to be our way of doing OpenStack, but it's definitely our operative system what's, what's uh, uh, underlying and underneath all those clouds, right? So you can consume uh, Ubuntu for OpenStack in many different ways. You can use it just uh, the packages, the way we package things, the way we build things, the canonical distribution of OpenStack, the, our, our reference architecture, and uh, on our managed, uh, managed uh, services uh, way, right? Uh, we'll go into the details of a couple of these a little bit later because those are um, suitable for the, for the, the main uh, matter of our, of our conversation. Question for you, how many service providers do you think there are in the world? How many? It's uh, about 40,000 service providers, right? That is uh, data from uh, Netcraft. The way we get this information is by tracking the traffic from those uh, servers that are exposed to the internet, right? So we know how many of those are. There might be some other servers that are not exposed to the internet, but we, we got to know that there are 40,000 points where people are uh, getting traffic from, right, in the, in the internet. This is an example of some of them. Uh, you get plenty of, uh, of variety here. You get uh, the big ones, the small ones, the, the local ones, uh, global, those that are, uh, I don't know, specific to a, to a niche, or uh, those that are really small and just to, you know, five servers in the garage of some, uh, of some guy somewhere in the world, right? Question for you, what do all these companies have in common? Let's answer that. What we sell when we've set up a service provider is basically three things, right? We sell compute, we sell storage, and we sell network to interconnect with, uh, with those services, right? In any of those combinations, but the combinations are limited, right? Everything that goes uh, after that, and there should be a fancy uh, thing here, anything that goes uh, around that is cosmetics. It's branding, it's uh, wording, it's uh, different namings of the same thing, right? At the end of the day, we're selling compute, storage, and network, right? But guess what? If you're selling those same things and the combination of them are, is limited, they're limited, it turns out that infrastructure as a service is a break-even business. 
So no matter how big the pie is, no matter how fast the pie grows, it is not a, you cannot get a sustainable competitive advantage by just selling infrastructure as a service because you are selling a combination of those three things, right? So how do we compete? How do we win? We have um, three ways of doing it. We have to take care of our economics. That's, that's key, right? Some of the big clouds are, are pulling away from the public cloud because of the economics. We need to take care of innovation. Those three things are still evolving, right? So we need to make sure that innovation is available to the end customers. And we need to pursue differentiation, okay? How do we win? Let's put here a, a bunch of things. So on the lower part of this diagram is things that are in-house, things that uh, we fix at home without our customers knowing. Okay, on top is the perception of our customers, is what our customers really see, okay. On that side, this side, most likely, uh, on the hardware side, we'll see uh, things that are related to, to, to that, to hardware. On the other side are procedure operations that we can uh, enhance as well. So let's take a, a look at each of those uh, parts of the, of the quadrant, right. In terms of hardware, you can aim at getting a cost reduction, remember the economics, a cost reduction between the 8 and the 10% if you're using some of the latest uh, hardware. We're looking at more density, we're looking at bigger hardware, we're looking at OCP, we're looking at different um, 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 references, different architectures. That doesn't necessarily need to be the Intel x86. We can build on power, we can build on, uh, on ARM, or we can use or integrate um, the container story, which is again, for service providers, it's about the density you can get, the dollar um, of the cost per gigabit of RAM, okay? How do our customers perceive that? Well, you enable choices. You create a pool of options for your customers to choose from. So whenever they select one of your services, it has to match their specific workload completely, right? An example of this is storage, for instance, right? You might not want to sell cold storage with SSD drives because that's going to be super expensive for your customer, right? So you might want to have some storage that will be fast for transactional um, uh, uh, workloads and some storage that will be slow and reliable for cold storage, things that you store there and you forget about it until someone eventually, if that happens, uh, asks for that. Let's have a look at the other side of the, uh, of the equation, where we get, um, where we're aiming at automation, right? The efficiency, how we operate, how well our operations are crafted, how good we are at operating our cloud, right? We did this, uh, last time I was in, in Tokyo, I, uh, it was uh, early in the, in the year, and we had this um, OpenStack Roadshow where we travel the world uh, showing our technology. Uh, and we got to meet very interesting people. One of the guys that I met was uh, the guy who set up the operations uh, for Amazon in Asia, right? They started off with 300 and 340,000 physical servers. Do you know how many people were employed to manage to operate that cluster? Five five people operating 340,000 servers. That is the level of automation we should be aiming at, right? It's difficult to get, this is Amazon. You get the same thing with Airbnb. They operate 400,000 virtual and physical servers in this case with only five people. It's not the same five, but it's a different five people. Still, five people operating 400,000 servers, right? So we can get to that level of, uh, of uh, automation, that level of efficiency. In order to get there, uh, we need to orchestrate some other services like the monitoring, the reporting, you know, make sure we can deliver to an SLA, which is very important for our customers as well, and that will give you a measurement of how efficient your operation is. And then let's, let's have a look at what the real money is. We've been talking that um, about infrastructure as a service being a break-even business, right? When we look at this, 
there's still a bunch of things you can deploy on top of your clouds that can be offered as a service, right? So we're looking at the solutions as a, as a service, and please don't quote me there, I don't want to do any as a service thing, uh, any new as a service thing, but solutions as a service, right? Um, whether that is Kubernetes or, or any platform as a service or any software as a service or any combination of those, right? Before I hand, the, I hand it over to, uh, to Omar, this is again from the um, OpenStack Summit survey, the workloads that we are deploying on OpenStack. Okay. If we are able to get this as services offered by our service providers, we will be starting that road to differentiation and tackling that niche market that we, uh, that we need in order for our cloud to be um, successful. Omar. Thank you so much, Arturo. Okay. Um, well, um, as Arturo has mentioned, we we are uh, trying to figure out how to lower up our uh, different technologies with innovation efforts to have the best uh, economics uh, approach. Uh, that means that, uh, uh, as as he mentioned or as he showed in the in the latest slide, uh, you can see that the first uh, two. Uh, topics are covered uh, are covering uh, infrastructure as a service, typical infrastructure uh, deployments. But the rest of the topics or the rest of the uh, the, the different fields that we are covering in this survey are uh, those that are related to the software as a service market. Uh, as you can see, we all, all the people is worried to deploy on production in a in a in a very good number on production web services, e-commerce databases, storage backup. And how we uh, can we handle this? Well, of course, using OpenStack because we are now uh, delivering the next uh, for for the service providers. Uh, the next concern we have is to deploy different workloads on top of our uh, infrastructure as a service. So, uh, once we have. Um, uh, solve this problem about infrastructure as a service with OpenStack. What we are concerned now is how we are going to win, not to compete, to win the market with the software as a service challenge. So what uh, I am going to talk is, is something about the, the different efforts, the different experience we have gained in the past um, in the past experience with another service providers we have uh, founded and, and collaborated, uh, and, and, and how OpenStack solved this problem. So. Um, which projects do OpenStack deployment use? Well, this is based on the latest uh, survey that was presented the last Friday by the OpenStack Foundation. As you can see, the first six uh, projects are uh, very important because are the core projects. I mean, uh, we can include also Swift. Uh, it's, it's very important because, as you can see, we have 42% with Swift on production. So I'm going to consider Swift as well after the, the main six uh, projects, Nova, Keystone, Horizon, Glance, Neutron, and Cinder. Uh, Hit is gaining a lot of popularity. That's good because that means that uh, the community is concerned about deploying software as a service. It's deploying by, uh, it's concerned about deploying workloads on top of your OpenStack uh, uh, public or private cloud. So. Uh, as you can see, this, these projects uh, are very important how they are distributed around the ecosystem on production, development, stagement, uh, staging, sorry, testing, etc. Because um, when, when you are talking about uh, the majority or the adoption of these projects, what you'll find is that we have the core projects always uh, leading the OpenStack ecosystem in terms of maturity, in terms of ad adoption, and how the rest of the uh, blueprints or, or, or projects are gaining popularity now uh, to try to, to compete with the software as a service market. So um, why I am mentioning this? Well, because uh, these, these key projects uh, are now solved. I mean, uh, are now um, very well um, st stood up uh, in terms of uh, their capabilities and functionalities, and they are ready uh, for production uh, clouds. But um, this is important uh, because uh, the approach we do uh, at Canonical is trying to do uh, the different permutations or combinations of these projects with the rest of the ecosystem of, of, of OpenStack. I mean, we have... Uh, uh, lead the different uh, or the next path uh, to deploy different combinations of these core projects with our ecosystem 
uh, that exist as partners in, in, in Canonical. That means that we have found the, oper the OpenStack Interoperability Lab that it has more than one year uh, running, it's up and running. Um, and what it means is that we uh, built uh, more than 30,000, more than 3,000, sorry, uh, clouds uh, per month, uh, where different components in terms of compute, in terms of uh, hypervisor, in terms of storage, in terms of networking, uh, those, those uh, different components are based on our partners. Um, that they uh, give us feedback and we gave we give us we give them feedback uh, with this laboratory uh, to have the best uh, methodologies to integrate with all the ecosystem i mean uh, we run this open uh, open stack interoperability lab uh, for different purposes but the main the main is that we certify that ubuntu openstack uh, can run any workload on any kind of different storage networking or compute component on, on top of this. So uh, with this methodology, what we have found is that uh, the different vendors or the different ecosystem has provided us a lot of uh, uh, feedback and, 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 and of course a lot of different uh, approaches to automate or to uh, have the best uh, simplicity efforts. When we are talking about economics, we always are talking about simplicity. And that means that we need to automate all the distributed workloads or the distributed scale out um, needs we have in the service providers. Um, that's the main reason that we have founded the OpenStack Interoperability Lab. Um, to, to have these different choices in terms of hypervisors, uh, storage, uh, networking. Uh, I can mention some of them. We, we, we can see them in the slide. Um, and to, 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 to get the next layer or the next label of deploying these workloads on top of those, uh, uh, those vendors on those OpenStack with those components. Uh, what I am talking about is now it's about Juju. Juju is this kind of um, enablement uh, tool that is going to allow us to reduce the gap, the typical gap that exists right now uh, between the end user and the infrastructure as a service. I mean, between those components of storage networking, infrastructure as a service, simple OpenStack uh, clouds, and the, the workloads you want to use. When I, when I say in workloads, uh, I am referring, of course, to, to that survey where the people is concerned about web servers, about e-commerce, uh, e about big data, about those real workloads that wants to deploy on top of a, on top of production, private or public cloud. So, Juju, it's a great uh, universal modeling tool you you use, uh, and we promote. It's open source. You can use it, of course. Um, where we are modeling, uh, we are encapsulating our workloads or the different workloads. We have hundreds of uh, charms. The, the concept of charm means that we encapsulate all the simplicity for your economics in the service provider. So uh, these charms or these different services that you can see uh, are encapsulating the different uh, uh, setbacks that you always are challenging or you are facing when you try to deploy any workload. Uh, in this slide, you can see uh, you, you trying to deploy a, an open stack, an open stack with, um, with Windows uh, as an using as a, an Active Directory and um, a, a Nova Hyper V uh, driver. That means that we use uh, this approach to deploy those workloads on top of our more easy way to understand the cloud. So uh, we are going to show you another example. For example, this, um, this charm or this model is allowing us to deploy open control as a SDN on top of OpenStack. That's, that's great because uh, when we are talking about simplicity, automation, repeatability, shareable, uh, approaches, we're talking about charming all those uh, workloads on top of our cloud. So uh, this is another example of uh, modeling or deploying your open control uh, SDN base and on OpenStack. Um, we have another one uh, that is uh, one of our partners uh, that is concerned about application performance management, AppFormix. Uh, they have already charmed their, their workloads 
And we have, for example, here another model that can allow us to deploy this kind of workloads. This is another example. And this latest, this last is, is the most important for me because uh, when you are in a service provider, when you are in a data center, when you are, wor when you are concerned about this uh, economics or this reduction of low cost, you need to think of high density, you need to think of how we are going to leverage all the uh, consumption of the power, consumption or usage of the resources. So your worry or your concern about density and that's uh, why we propose LexD. LexD is our next generation lighter visor. When I say light advisor, it's a hypervisor, but it's lighter in terms of size, not just size because of the, of the, of the, of the, of the size of the source code that uh, is living inside the kernel, but because uh, you have direct access to your hardware because it is a container, a whole system container story. So when I am talking about LexD, it's because I am talking about high density, because I am talking about performance. And when I am saying performance, that means that we can crush KVM. And crush KVM is something like 14x, 14 times density. When, when, when you try to think of economics, you are trying to think of uh, low latency. You are trying to think of how to solve the different ways you need to deploy different workloads on top of your cloud for using software as a service market or to win the software as a service service market. So as you can see, this, this uh, very simple graph uh, is showing us uh, um, we have uh, deployed 37 KVM guests in 943 seconds versus 536 uh, guests with LexD in less in less seconds. So we have less le latency and of course we have more density um, in a fraction of time. So uh, this is the way how we solve uh, how to win the market, how to uh, have our uh, gap uh, solved in terms of understanding the different uh, deployment of the workloads on, on, on software as a service. And you know what? Uh, this ecosystem, uh, it's available now for hundreds and hundreds of, of, of open source projects uh, in juju. Uh, sorry, demo.jujucharms.com. So you can access this ecosystem, you can deploy your own workload, and if that workload does not exist on the, on the App Store, then you can uh, develop your own app, st uh, app store or charm. It's very easy to develop them. So um, guess what? I'm going to show you if the uh, coverage of the Wi-Fi allows me uh, uh, how we can integrate this deployment of workloads on top of our OpenStack Cloud. So give me one second. have a simple liberty, this is our liberty, uh, open stack ready. Have you, have you seen our orange boxes economically? We have different uh, laboratories we use to use the orange boxes. I invite you to our booth in the marketplace if you want to play more with, with these demos. So I'm going to log in to an orange box that actually has Li uh, liberty as uh, our latest OpenStack version. As you can see, we have here a uh, main project that is the ad admin project. And this admin project has some instances already spinned up. So we have three instances. Why we have three instances? Well, because we are trying to reduce this gap. We are trying to win this uh, market with uh, with more easy ways uh, to understand the deployment of workloads. So for that reason is that we have embedded our Juju App Store inside Horizon. That means that you can 
now in a very uh, understandable abstraction layer of um, your workloads, of your public or private cloud, in a fancy way, we have embedded this component to understand what we want as an end user, as a consumer of the cloud. So I have now um, a, a, a workload running, uh, that this is Redis, this is a key value uh, typical server. What I'm going to do is deploying a new environment, a new modeling, uh, to show you how easy it is to understand how our App Store is ready to deploy on top of your cloud with no uh, any uh, knowledge of uh, understand or understanding of infrastructure as a service. So uh, I, am, I, I, I like a lot, for example, to show you uh, a bundle of analytics. Um, when I am talking about analytics, of course, we are talking about uh, big data, about Hadoop. Um, for example, let me show you maybe this. This is a real-time syslog analytics. So when you have a lot of servers that they are writing a lot of logs on top of their different infrastructure, we need to understand a very easy mechanism to have a comprehensive monitoring of the of different uh, data sources. So I'm going to deploy this. Uh, I have some latency because of the network. I'm going to add it to the canvas. And you'll see now that we are trying to place these different services on top of different machines that I am going to run or spin up on top of our OpenStack. So they have placed all the units. I just need to commit the change. And, ha and what will happen now is that the, this gap that uh, exists usually between the user and the deployment of the infrastructure as a service of your instances that are running KVM or another hypervisor or, or, or containers, it's going to be reduced immediately uh, with our Juju uh, universal modeling tool. So I am deploying now the different workloads. I have commit change. Let's see. Services. We need to wait response from the network. Okay. And now have you changed, have you seen that the, um, the status is changing to yellow? That means that at this moment we are trying to spin up those instances to install the different workloads on top of your OpenStack cloud. So I'm going to try to, to minimize my environment to fit well in our screen. So we need to uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass the microphone to Arturo, and maybe uh, before he finishes, uh, we, we can see a real uh, use case about syslog analytics on top of our OpenStack with just three clicks. That's the way how we win. Okay, so, so this, is, this is how you differentiate, right? So imagine the amount of the, the number of uh, possibilities here um, is just, uh, just way too big, right? So you can have your own Hadoop or your own pass or your own um, whatever SOA um, service you want to configure. How do you get it started? Well, first, the first thing you need is a cloud, right? The, 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 the easiest way um, we agreed, otherwise you wouldn't be here, uh, that OpenStack is the way to go, right? So you need a cloud that has uh, best economics, that allows that innovation, that can get you to the um, uh, configuration of services, right? Uh, at Canonical, we have this thing called Bootstack, which is our managed services. It's the easiest way to get a cloud up and running. This service, we will build a cloud for you. We will, to your specific uh, 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 workload or initial workload, 
um, is a flexible reference architecture, so we, we, can, uh, we can decide jointly how that cloud is going gonna, is gonna to work, and we build it for success, which means that it will be ready to accommodate all the workloads that you're going to be designing and modeling through Juju. Okay? We will operate that cloud to an SLA for you during a minimum period of time while you get your team, if you want to get your team, which is um, hiring, training, and keeping a bunch of engineers. And we will optionally transfer, so there's no lock-in, right? Right after you get your team, we will hand over the keys to you and you start uh, you get into the, the driver's seat, okay? This is basically what we do. For time's sake, I'm uh, just going to skip a few, uh, a few slides. Uh, if you take the economics alone, you're going to need a team of six, five to six people to operate a cloud. That will mean roughly $900,000 a year, okay? Um, just take that into account. Also, this is only to get the team. If you want to keep the team, don't send them to the OpenStack Summit because there's people here hiring, all right? Um, our, service, our services are uh, certified MSP Alliance certification, uh, just to give your customers comfort on who is operating their data. Uh, their data privacy is taken care of, the security is taken care of, and there's a third body uh, that uh, acknowledges that for us. And it will also have our, be part of our certified public cloud program. So in this program, what we do is we ensure the experience with Ubuntu uh, images, which again, 60% of the Linux in, uh, in the public clouds are Ubuntu. The experience is uh, standard, is good across the board. We can also extend our, uh, our managed services to the clusters that you're deploying on top, right? So we can, we can do the managed service also on the Hadoop cluster you've deployed on top of the cloud. If you want to deploy it on top of this cloud or on top of any cloud. So there's an extension to that uh, that will allow your customers just to focus on, or yourself just to focus on getting customers that will focus on their own data, right? Instead of figuring out how to model those, um, those um, Hadoop uh, or big data um, clusters. Three things I want you guys to remember. OpenSec is the way to go, of course. It's the only platform that will allow you all those four quadrants that we saw. It will be the only platform to allow you to differentiate, to innovate constantly, and, uh, and to have uh, the best economics. When you pursue differentiation, you have to move up the stack. You, you cannot be doing only infrastructure as a service. That's break even. You need to move up the stack. And I encourage you to you, you use Juju as a, as, a, as a great asset to get uh, they're fast. And then if you want to get your first steps in, the, in OpenStack, Bootstack, the managed service, will get you a cloud with no upfront cost, with incredible economics, uh, with no lock-in. Uh, so basically it's what you're looking for. It will end with excellent time for the money, right? It will get you, it will get you um, uh, a cloud up and running in, uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, all right, so uh, we'll open it up for questions. Just uh, reminding you, we're going to be tomorrow doing a sizing of the OpenStack in uh, in uh, Segyoku uh, at 3:40. There's a canonical track day uh, on Thursday, starting at nine with Mark Shuttleworth. Drop by our booth if you want to see that demo we saw. Uh, want to see it closely? Want to play around with it in an orange box? Uh, or contact any of us uh, at any time. Uh, I don't know if you want to look at the uh, cluster or uh, we'll uh, leave it for a... Yeah, sure. let's, let's do it. As you can see, there are some instances that are already spin up. So if you remember that where there were only three instances spin up. So I'm going to click on instances now and you'll see how many are you you see that we have a lot of instances that are already spin up. So that means that we are reducing that gap that, that we are talking about. Yeah. So deploying, uh, winning the SOPA as a service market. Any questions? We are welcome, more than welcome to take them. To, to take them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Arigato.